Welcome to Talk of the Town, everyone. We are still keeping our distance during this health crisis. We can't wait to get back out and visit lots of guests. We've got so many really cool ideas coming up a little later in the summer. But for now, we're outside at Marie's house. So a little later, we'll go inside. And then we'll come to my house. And, and then Zach's house and come back outside. You know, <laughs> we're just going to stay here and do our thing. That's right, we are. <laughs> and we've got some gourds in front of us. What are we right. doing with these? So, well, we know that um, it, we're coming into Memorial Day, and then we have Fourth of July and Labor Day. So we thought the red, white, and blue theme would be cool. And this is a green, this is a gourd uh, turned into a birdhouse. So, cool. yeah, aren't they cute? So we're gonna put that one aside. So you prepped some of these for us. I this got one. ready, so I, yeah, so I experimented a little bit. That one was a little bit thicker of a gourd and I used this to drill this. Mm -hmm. And then I used this to try to drill this and look what happened. <laughs> and of course she did that before the cameras were rolling. <laughs> yeah, or I'm sure it would be shown. So <laughs> then what I did was I did that little guy rolling away and I did it with just a regular drill bit. Actually, it was a bigger drill bit than this, though. Um, this I did the little drilling up here because we're gonna put a wire through here, and then we're gonna okay. go inside and paint them. But I thought we'd come outside, do some more holes, and uh, get them smooth, nice and smooth. All right, with so that. we've got a sander. You know what, so, these gourds are so dried out. They're, they've been around a yeah, while. Yeah, these have been around a while. So what we have to do first, and I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna do the hanger since I have this drill bit in. Go right? for it. So we're just gonna go straight across. I'm gonna go down far enough. And that's nice and easy. So we're gonna get a piece yeah. of wire in there at some point. This one needs to go too. I'll do it right there because that one already had a start. Okay, this one too? You uh -huh. want me to do oh, it? We're not doing this one. This is the broken one. That was practice. Yeah. <laughs> that one's well, getting one, chucked. Okay. I'm like, Hangs a little crooked. No, you gotta go nice and slow. There you go. Okay. All right. So now I'm gonna take this out and put a bigger one in so we can do the other hole. It's almost like a heavy duty paper mache. You have to be careful. You have to be careful because you saw what happened to the one. <laughs> I'll go first since, um, and we'll each do one of these. Since you've got a since, little more practice since than I had me. a little more practice, but I'll aim toward you. So what they said was, remember, a bird's gonna go in here. When they go in here, they wanna kinda go in and down. They have to build their nest down here in the bottom. So you put it right where the, the gourd is starting to arc up, and you want the hole to go down at an angle this way so that it's kind of, they have to fly in this way. You don't want it to go this way because stuff might fall out. I yeah. Suppose. So or you want it, it to be user friendly. Yeah. Bird so, user friendly. So this is what I did with the one that was successful. I just started slowly and then I just started making it bigger randomly. <laughs> All right, I'll let you start on yours and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger with this little exacto knife that I have because you can mm. kind of start making it a little bigger and a little smoother, and then we can sand right, it to get so it a I'm little gonna bit. make my hole right about there. And hold it nice and... Yeah. You did very well for your first time. You didn't destroy Yay! anything like I did. Wow, so then you have to dump out all the seeds that are in there? Yes, um, and here's, I've been putting them in this bag. So, Old Wives Tale says, when you do this for a bird, you empty out the inside, and then what it says is, you should save these seeds because you could plant them again for next year. However, these gourds have literally been in my garage for maybe five or six years. So I'm pretty sure the seeds are not viable. So we're gonna toss all of the middle. Okay. But what it also said was that you should take these seeds and take two seeds, one for the boy and one for the girl bird, and throw them in as a welcome to your new home present. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> So we're gonna do that at the end, but I'm gonna get some sunflower seeds from the garage. Oh, so nice. They're nice they'll, fresh seeds. Okay? They'll be happy. And I have sandpaper here, and then we can smooth it out so the birdie doesn't hurt its little feathers, its little body. Have you ever hung up a gourd birdhouse before? We did when we were kids. I never really paid attention, though, to see if any birds went in it. 
I'm noticing your cats haven't come to visit us, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. They're on people overload. <laughs> there aren't usually people here all the time. And they're like, when are you going to work? <laughs> yeah. So now the sanding, you have the sander thing over there. You can start with that if you want. Um, and basically, you just want to buff the outside of the gourd. Depending on how much you're going to paint it, if you buffed it enough, remember you're going to be making it thinner as you buff it, so you don't want to go too, you don't want to make it too thin, oh but you boy. might want to get some of that icky black stuff off if it mm. comes off with the... It kind of looks interesting to me. And that's fine too. But well, let's see. seem like to me that just taking off something that would peel off if you painted it would be good. So like yeah. if you just got it down to be like somewhat smooth, mm -hmm. at least like that leaf stuck yeah. on there. This little one's cute how it has a thing like here. I like that because that one's like it was, when it was soft it like dented in. Yeah. All right. It's cute. So you want, now some. we can head inside and paint them up. All right. We've got all of our gourds inside and before we can paint we decided it would be best to put you know, a piece of wire on top. Hanger. Yes, to hang it. Okay. And normally you'd think you'd do that last after it dries. Right. But this way, if you have it, you can like paint it and then hang it and let it dry for a little bit before you start on whatever other color you're gonna do. Which is not a bad idea. But now this one, this was a hard one for me to drill because I couldn't drill like the small ones we drilled all the way through. This one I couldn't drill all the way through so I have to find the hole on the other yeah. side. And that might be tricky. Yeah. I might be here all day. I'm gonna poke my eye out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't poke your eye out. Oh, I see it. Maybe you have to go up. Well, I do. I either have to go up or, or down. down. I was trying to go down, and that was not not working. really working. So let's try up. Just have to get it through a thick gourd of yours. <laughs> <laughs> get it through your gourd. While you're messing with that, I'm gonna. One of mine is going to be red, white, and blue. Okay, and I'm of... done before I get started. I think I'm about ready to make the hole bigger. Let well, me no, try. it was because it went all the way through. You never know. Sometimes this is one of those things where if you gave it to Zach Murray, he'd get it done immediately. <laughs> well, we'll try that. I think that might do it. It doesn't want to go up. Maybe it should go down, but then we have to. Then we have to. Uh... <laughs> Tricky. Where's that wire? I'm gonna try again. You know what this means, Murray? We're gonna hand it to Zach. Yeah. <laughs> and watch, he's gonna thread it in two seconds. We're dealing with here. <laughs> Please! I almost don't want him to be able to do it immediately. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Kudos to you, Zach. Time to paint. All right, Marie, what are you doing to your gourd? I'm going to make a this like a yellow sunflower entrance, I think. That's how I'm going to start with this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do yellow and and, uh, and mine's going to be red, white and blue. And I told Zach I would make one for him. So this is Zach's and he wanted like a a sea foam blue green color, so that's what he's gonna get. My other one is going to be just some, I wanna keep it real natural looking. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'm gonna do is just use black and put it on the natural gourd and leave a lot of the gourd natural and just do like different designs, swirls, like maybe look at, make it look like a little bit of vines or something like that. Mm. Just something much more natural than my flower's going to be. We didn't buy any paint for this project either. This was all this is all left over from other stuff we've done. <laughs> Which is kind of par for the course, right? It is. Just means we've done a lot of stuff. That's what it looks like so far. You can't be wrong. It's just nonsense. Kind of looks like a foreign language. <laughs> right? And the sunflower is drying on its first coat, but here's what it looks like so far. Mine's red, white, and blue. Cool. So far. <laughs> All right, so I want to know if you both are going to hang your gourds up. Well, of course. At your house. Yeah. Yeah. 
If someone were to buy gourds in the fall, how long should they let them sit? A year? Well, you know what? After the problem, this is what I would try. And this is what I might try this year. Um, if you had a fresh gourd, I bet you you could drill a hole in it without shattering it. And then I also bet it would dry out faster if you let the air into the inside. Yeah, probably would. All right, so we're getting there, almost done with this project. This one's gonna take a little bit longer. It needs accents and some more yellow paint to make, till I'm happy with it. This one's almost done. I just have to do the bottom. So while you talk a little bit, I think that's dry enough for me to keep going. What do you <laughs> okay. got over there? Well, this one I did for Zach. He wanted that seafoam blue-green color. It's and, cute. And I added polka dots, cause why not? Why not? And mine is red, white, and blue. I was feeling kind of patriotic. So that's how the gourd finished up. Now all that's left for me and when yours are done is we're gonna take them into the studio because Frank, our head tech, <laughs> he's great <laughs> with finishing touches like uh, using like a clear coat to put over these. And so we will get him to help us out. But one more thing we can't forget. I brought these bird seed, remember? Oh, so see the that's bird seed? right. So the bird seed's right there. And what we need to do is for each new little couple of birds, one for the girl and one for the boy. Can we put them in mine one too? One for the girl and for the boy. And this is a welcome to your new home, birdies. And they will be thrilled. Hope so. So Kim, why did we start with a craft segment instead of baking so we could eat during the craft segment? I know, it was a mistake. <laughs> why did we do that? <laughs> but we're outside in your garden. Clearly we're gonna do something here. This is my rhubarb plant. Looks and great. Yeah, so when it's ready, we gotta take some, we gotta make something, right? So we need, we said maybe let's get five big stalks right, and all good. the way to the bottom, as far as you can reach to, to cut the stalk and rhubarb. cut the leaf off. Okay. All right, uh, this one's a pretty good one too. Did you find another good one? Yeah. All right. Let me take a look. I think I'm gonna get, let's get one more. Find one more there, Kim, because- One more. I'm just afraid we're not gonna have- Enough? Enough. Now, let's go bake. We're gonna make some rhubarb pound cake. Yum. Marie, I have never made anything with rhubarb stock, so I'm really excited about wow. this. Wow, well, I've eaten rhubarb my whole life because my dad used to grow it, and then I have a plant now, so I grow it myself. Strawberry rhubarb pie I've eaten. I've just mm -hmm. never made anything with mm -hmm. it. And the reason is because this is very, very tart, so you need something to, to like, cut it yeah, with. to cut that. So a lot of people, you, you cook it with strawberries or something really sweet, but you don't have to make it super sweet. I like it when you still taste some of the tartness. So we're gonna make a pound cake, which is gonna be sweet, but the rhubarb, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it as decoration across here and make stripes. So that's what we wanna do is measure off so that we're going about across what it would be. And if we have little extra pieces, that's okay. We'll just stick them in there when, it, when we're in the okay. middle. The really cool thing, and the reason I picked this recipe, I've never tried this before, so we gotta, you know, sometimes <laughs> It's there gonna are, be great. Sometimes there's problems, but we're gonna find out. But it looked really interesting to me because the rhubarb gets cooked up. Ooh, ooh I just dumped them Not all with out. all of them, right? Not with all of them. Those are vanilla beans, and we're gonna take just a half of a vanilla bean Actually, it says a half of a vanilla bean, but I think we should use a whole vanilla bean. Yeah, what do you think? it smells great. Okay, so we're gonna slice that open. What you wanna do is scrape the seeds out of it. Yeah. And you can't just throw the whole stick in? Well, I'm sure you could, but then you might miss out on some of the goodness of the inside of it. See how tough the skin is? Yeah. The good stuff's on the inside. And this is one thing that I haven't done before. Never grew vanilla beans, you? Nope. <laughs> Don't think they grow around here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and medium pot combined sugar. In it goes. One cup of water and the vanilla bean and seeds. And then we're gonna bring that to a boil. So we'll take that over to the stove. Once it's boiling, we're gonna throw in the rhubarb. Now we're going to, it says simmer for what, two minutes? Now we just gotta take this back over and let it cool down. Marie, this rhubarb is stewed officially. I can smell the <laughs> vanilla too, can yes. you? Yes. Okay, so we're going to just let it cool off because we're gonna have to cut these again. 
So we're just gonna let it cool, oops, let it cool off as we make the rest of the batter. Then we're going to save this juice that we made. The first thing we have to do is get the vanilla seeds out of there. So we're gonna try to strain that. So it looks like we got some of the seeds in here, but there's actually some. I'm gonna stick them in my mixer over here, and I'm also gonna scrape out, see the ones around the edge yeah, there? Yeah, use this. There's some black seeds like hanging out there, so you don't wanna lose that good vanilla. Success. Yay. Ooh, All there's right. more beans in there if you wanna get I'll rid of that scrape vanilla. scrape them right into here too. Don't want to waste that yummy vanilla. It's a lot of vanilla. It is I'm a lot of vanilla. I don't know. You and I have never played with vanilla beans before. We're learning something today. I know, right? Who would have thought? All right, so you have the dry ingredients. I've I got do. the wet ingredients. So what do you got? You have... Okay, this is sprouted grain flour, right, but you can use cake flour, but mm -hmm. this is what we have at your house. <laughs> that's what I use. Well, I have both, but this is the good stuff. I have, a cup, I have a third of a cup of milk that I put in there with that vanilla mm -hmm. beans that we put in there, and I'm putting in a cup of butter, so two sticks of butter. And I'm adding a teaspoon of baking powder, and then a half a teaspoon of salt. All right, okay. I'm going to turn this on and start blending this part a little bit. I know you're going to need vanilla, so yes, there's the I need teaspoon. The vanilla. So now I'm going to need this to mix this up. Blending the butter, creaming the butter a little bit there. And then this calls, what's funny is we did everything with that vanilla bean, but it also still calls for vanilla extract. So this is a very vanilla-y pound cake. Just mm. one teaspoon. <laughs> we missed more ingredients on the second page. We need, we need a cup of sugar and four eggs to go in here. A cup of sugar. And we need to start cracking those eggs into here. And then the next thing we're gonna put in your flour mixture next. But not all of it, I think we're gonna do that in stages. This is looking pretty yummy. Yep. Nice and light and whipped. Get it all? Yep. Okay, I'd say that's barely combined. All right. Now, it's half of it goes in. Yeah, right? we're gonna put half of it in there. Okay, so the pan has already been sprayed, so. So it won't stick. Hard to tell exactly what half it is here. 50%. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> Since this is going to be the middle, I say we take the ugliest of these rhubarbs. And I'm throwing a little bit more in. And we want to put them in stripes like this Wait, across. Wait, aren't you supposed to cut them in half? Oh, that's right. You're right. Which way? Long ways. I bet you could just pull them apart. Here. You don't want to smoosh it, though. Yeah. It looks like string cheese. It does, it does like string cheese. Taking the ugly ones, because we want to keep the pretty ones for the top, right? Yep. This one's broken. So these are gonna be. Are you a full of flour? Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I may have gotten it on the table, but I didn't tell you to put your arm in it. <laughs> yeah, but it was strategically on my side. <laughs> <laughs> it was the mixer. <laughs> no, I think it was the dumper. She's just trying to find a way. <laughs> Save the pretty ones for the top. It is a sticky, thick batter. All right, so that looks delicious. We have hidden rhubarb in the middle there. We're gonna bake that for the first 20 minutes, just like that. Then we're gonna open it up and ah. add this to it. And we have this for later too. So for now, yeah. we just gotta right. pop this in the in oven. In the oven, 350. Yep. All right, so while that cooks for 20 minutes, we have to reduce this liquid from the poaching of the rhubarb. Brought it to a boil and we're simmering it down for about 10 minutes. All right, so first 20 minutes is down. You can see it's still very goopy. In the middle. We're going to lay these guys on the top now. Looks good enough. pretty good. And back in. 
let's do 25 and check it. How's yeah, that? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Welcome to Quarantine Project Day at my home. I've got lots of things to keep me busy. Many of them I've been putting off for weeks or months or even years. So today I'm starting on painting all of the trim and the baseboards in my dining room. Just one of the many projects that needs to be done. This wood trim has needed to be painted for a very long time. And this seems like the perfect opportunity. Just a gallon of paint, some paint brushes, and drop cloths. You know we all need drop cloths, especially at my house. Looks pretty good. And a fresh coat of paint makes everything look clean. All the baseboards are painted, so I'm pretty happy about that. Unfortunately, they're all going to need a second coat, but that's all right. They're going to dry for a while and that gives me a chance to have a treat. Time for a cupcake. I'm looking forward to these cupcakes and in honor of Memorial Day this month, I'm making them patriotic. You can too. It's really easy. You can put chocolate or vanilla frosting on. The key is red, white, and blue M&Ms. Yum. I'm also a fan of these little mini cupcakes. They're the perfect little bite-sized cupcake. Of course, you can also put more frosting than the cupcake <laughs> if you want. That was a pretty good landing right there. But they're really yummy too. Time for my final project of the day. I pulled out my sewing machine. You know what that means. I couldn't find anything else to do, but I do have a really nice pair of sweatpants that have a hole and I'm hoping that my sewing machine can help. So let's see, the sewing machine doesn't get a lot of use. So hopefully I don't mess this up. Cause there aren't too many places open that will sew things for me right now. right in the middle of the under armor symbol. So <laughs> my under armor is a little smushed, but hey, the hole's no longer there. Success. Now I have a question for all of you. You know my sewing skills are somewhat limited, but my husband has this old sock and he thinks I should sew it. Now, do we sew socks today? We are the year 2020. Do we sew our socks or do we throw them away and buy new socks? This is a question for all of you. In the meantime, maybe I'll practice with the sock. Not saying he'll get it back, but we'll see how it goes. What do you know? It worked. Although there's a bit of a nubby thing right there. I wouldn't want that rubbing on my foot, but he wanted his socks sewn. I guess he can have it. Enough projects for one day. Time to veg in front of the TV. See ya. Time for a tune up. I know I should be heading to the salon to get these roots taken care of, but they're all closed and we're all stuck at home. So I'm gonna try to maintain my lawnmower so I can mow my grass. Usually I would leave this to the professionals, but today I am going to change the air filter, change the spark plug, do an oil change, and put on a new mower blade so it's nice and sharp. It's not really that hard, at least looking on the internet. So I ordered a kit on the internet that was about, it was less than 50 bucks like $44 and I got a new blade, I got some oil, I got a new spark plug and I got a new air filter. So that, I thought that was a pretty good deal. 
So the first thing you have to do is if there's gas in there, which there is some gas in there, but not a lot, I don't want it to come out when I tip my lawnmower. So little trick, you can put a sandwich bag on there, tighten it up. That's one thing. And mine also has this fuel line stopper. So right there now, no gas is going to go to the mower. And the last thing that you should always do before you start messing around is disconnect the spark plug. Now I'm gonna tip it, but I'm gonna keep the air filter side up so that I can get to the blade. And I know this old blade is really hacked up. I have a trusty block of wood and a few tools. Now, let's see how tight this is. I brought a hammer just in case it's too tight. Oops. I think I got it. That one looks looser. These are ready for the trash. So I made sure to pay attention as to how the old blades came off so the new blades go on the exact same way. Now they're nice and tight, as tight as I can get them. All right, so next we're going to change the oil. So I have a pan to catch the old oil. I'm going to take the stick out. Put that aside for now. And basically I have to pour this oil into the pan. So I'm hoping I can do it without too much trouble. And of course you want to recycle the oil. So we're gonna save this and find a shop who takes old oil and they'll recycle it for us. All right, so my lawnmower takes between 12 and 13 and a half ounces of oil. And you can see how this oil is a lot cleaner. That should be good. fresh new oil and then before you seal it up you want to check to make sure your level is good so you just put it, the dipstick in bring it out and I'm it's really hard to see now because it's so clean but it looks like it's right in the middle of those X's which is what I want so oil is done all right we still have to do the air filter and the spark plug but we're done tipping the mower over now take my little plastic bag out. I was keeping a little bit of gas that I have in this in there and didn't let it leak. So the spark plug is next and I did not have the proper tool for this. So thank you, George, for letting me borrow your socket wrench with spark plug adapter, I'm gonna guess it's called. Loosen it. So now it's loose. Take out the old spark plug. And the new spark plug came in my kit. So you can see the old spark plug is black. Probably really needs to be replaced. Don't want my mower to stop. So the brand new spark plug, and it's gonna go right here. I'm gonna take it as far as I can with my hand. And I'm gonna get George's fancy tool out. I want to make the spark plug tight, but not too tight. So I think I'm good. And then we have our spark plug cap. All done. Going. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
So one more thing to do, and as you can see, you don't do this on a sunny day because you could be mowing. We're trying to get this done really quick before the rain comes down really hard. One last thing is the air filter. Oh boy. So there's some graphs in there. And this air filter, they're not quite the same color. Getting wet. There. Whoo! Ready. Thank you, Maddie, for shooting for me. It's my daughter Maddie behind the camera. No problem. <laughs> All right, well, the grass is certainly growing. My mower's a little bit wet, but now we'll be ready for the first sunny day when I get out. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Zach Booth. I'm Kate Booth. And uh, it's Mother's Day this month. It was a beautiful day today, so we decided to look around the house, find some craft supplies, something that we could make a Mother's Day card with. Uh, we scoured- All of the wrapping paper we yeah, own. Zach just the brought paper. all the wrapping paper out. Yeah. We don't have any kids, so we don't have construction paper. Yeah. But we do have wrapping paper, a little <laughs> bit of packaging paper, and we have some colored printer paper, uh, some rubber cement, scissors, a uh, little mini uh, Polaroid printer. So we printed out some photos of, uh, this is me, my sister, with my mom. And that's me and my mom. So what we're gonna do is make a pop-up Mother's Day card. Yeah. With the photo in there somehow, either the element that pops up or maybe yeah. a heart pops up, something like that. And we're just gonna kinda wing it yep. as we go. And my mom's birthday is right around Mother's Day every year, so um, her birthday is three days before Mother's Day this year, so I'm gonna make her a birthday card okay. instead of Mother's Day. Yeah, all right. So my thought for my card that I was going to do is I'm going to pick two colors, one for the inside of the card and one for the outside of the card. I would like blue for mine. I feel like this wrapping paper has seen better days. I think I'm going to go orange and red. And I think that I'm going to do red on the outside and cut two sides down a little bit so that we see the orange border on the outside. I don't, my brain can't understand how this pop-out's gonna work. I'll show you with mine. Like that. And like that. Then we reverse the fold like that so that when it opens. But where's the picture gonna go? The picture may be like that. So the picture comes out like that. Okay. Not my straightest work, but I can hide that edge on the back. I was just thinking how like we're not the craftiest people. <laughs> yeah. And fun fact, we don't own a straight edge ruler. So we can't measure short things. Or long draw thing. straight lines. <laughs> I mean, I could get a yardstick, but I can't imagine us trying to deal with a yardstick on this, this table along with all these rolls of paper. So this is my cut side, and this was my cut side. I'm gonna hide this cut side on the back of the card. So it'll look something like this from That's the outside. Cute. That is cute. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> and I'm gonna use this balloon paper to be the front of my card. So I'm just gonna trace the size of the card so that I can cut a piece that's the same size. I'm gonna start gluing. As I've mentioned many times on the show, I hate white glue crafts. We don't have white glue in our house. We don't have a glue stick in our house. <laughs> we told you we weren't crafty. We weren't kidding. <laughs> no but rulers. We do have rubber cement. <laughs> no glue. But We're lucky we have scissors. <laughs> I'm of the opinion that rubber cement is the right stuff for this job anyway. Oh yeah, the uh, wrapping paper has nice lines on the back. It does, which only sort of helped me because somehow my paper is not folded straight. All I had to do was fold it straight. 
Nope. Okay, I'm getting a little too close to the exposed edge with my rubber cement, but rubber cement, just let it dry, and then you can Peel it off. rub it off. What are you working with there? Honestly, I'm not so sure. I'm just in a constant state of trimming my paper because I can't get it to be the size I want it to be. So that's fun. It sounds so very me. I'm gonna try attaching <laughs> the photo so I know what uh, kind of size and shape I'm left with. Okay, I think I'm ready to glue this on. Maybe. <laughs> How old do we think this glue is? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I'll say Bush administration. H.W. <laughs> Bush administration. Okay, somehow still didn't cut this straight, but that's okay. That looks great. If we had a ruler. If we had a ruler. It might work. You'd still have to cut along that straight line, oh, but. Oh look, it came through. What do you think? It's cute. I'm gonna show you every step of the way because there aren't many steps. <laughs> um, I changed my mind, I'm doing Happy Mother's Day on the front. And then Love You on the inside. Let me tell you a little story about Zach. <laughs> I don't write many cards. No, he's gotten so much better at writing cards because I love cards, but he never knows what to write in them. So he's a man of few words in a card. Happy Mother's Day, love, love you. Love you, that's all he's got. Sounds about no, that's not right work at all. for Zach Booth. So we have this lovely um, art kit that I purchased probably to give as a present to someone and then never did, and. So I rated it. Yeah, Zach rated it, but it's old. It's definitely been sitting, oh my God, look, a ruler. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. We didn't really investigate the art kit hard enough, no, I guess. but it's hardly long enough to. It's perfect for the card. Well, on the inside, maybe, I don't maybe. know. Maybe. What are you using that for? So I'm going to use this to write Happy Mother's oh, Day okay, yep, yep. and slap it on the card Cute. rather than writing directly on the sort of dark, bright paper. I feel like my card should be smaller. Like the picture feels too small for this big card. So I might actually just like... Lop some. Yeah. Yeah. Trim it down a little bit. Once you take it away, you can't put it back. Uh, that's a problem. Just I remember have. that. <laughs> I, I know. Don't I know it? We're gonna, I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit. Oh, that is not straight at all. Okay, got myself a little square card though. I am just winging it here. We all are. This <laughs> is, this quarantine is unprecedented. Oh my God. We are all just winging it. Mom, I'm sorry I don't measure anything, but honestly, does my mom measure stuff? No. Like this is. No. I got it from you. <laughs> My lack of, of needing to conform to what art should look like. It's my art. It can look however I want it to. Oh. Happy. That is a huge relief that <laughs> I got that spaced. I got it all kind of lined up. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where your card ended. Just happy. Just happy. Just happy on the outside. You know what? I'm happy with this, <laughs> so it might just end here. Oh, caught a bad edge on that. Here's S. where I'm at with my birthday card. Happy birthday. With my one marker that works. And then there's a pop-up picture. Happy Mother's Day. You did it. Three words. Two more to go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to put on the back of my card. No. Do I need to put something on the back of my card? I mean. What are you calling the back? This. No. Oh. Just a barcode and a. And a 20 cent price tag. Yeah. 20, that's. Hey. Oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Love you. That is a winner. That's a Zach Booth card, all right. Love you. So now we have a little pop-up heart kind of offset behind the photo. So I think I'm just going to sign mine and call it a day. Surprise, surprise, no more words. 
Love you, Zach. I wrote cards by Kate on the back of mine. It's like, yeah, proprietary. You gotta sign it, yeah. <laughs> so, the takeaway from this project, I think, is just the idea of doing a, a pop out something. Well, a happy Mother's Day, not only to my mom and Zach's mom and Kim and Marie and Graham. We have lots of moms in our life, so um, we're very grateful for all of them. And happy Mother's Day to each and every one of them and each and every one of you that are mom. All the moms out there. Yeah. Happy Thank Mother's you. Day. Thank you. Enjoy your day. We're back together again. <laughs> it's always Yay. great to be back at your house. It is. It's always fun to be together in these segments, right? Not it apart, is. But. Okay, so, you know, we're going to make some food because why not? And you got to eat already in this show and I haven't. That's I not just fair. Had, I just had a cupcake. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you're going to have apples with sugar all over them. <laughs> Can't have too much dessert. Anyway, we're going to make apple nachos. Apple nachos. Okay. Found it on the internet. Who knows? But it seemed like can't go I'm wrong. I'm standing up. Ah, good go. job. Me too. I'm a little taller. I'm going to hit your light. <laughs> and we're cutting these in half or more? Yes, you want little slices. So just in half or? Well, let's see. Cut them in half and let's see. That's probably good. Yeah, I think that's I think good. so. And then let's just make them look nice on the tray. Okay. Let's sort of like a pinwheel. We and then we'll see. Okay. In the middle, it should go the other direction. You're right. To make it aesthetically it pleasing. It didn't say that in the instructions. That's just your rule. I like it. <laughs> so we're just flipping them over. Look at how nice. Yay. Oh, that's two. So have you ever actually cut up nuts? No, I don't cut up nuts. I put them in a plastic bag. I stomp on them on the floor with the corner open. <laughs> Usually. All right. All right. <laughs> we're not going to. So I do. It's in a bag. It doesn't touch my foot, but I do. That's what I do. It's just, you know, <laughs> for safety's sake, we're not going to let Marie smash the nuts the that I might now. be eating later. <laughs> and these are some patriotic M&Ms. We've given you that big hammer, and I just, this is like, you know, okay. to sharpen your knives, but it also works for smashing up nuts. So you smash the M&Ms, I'll smash the nuts. I think we're good. There's some whole ones in there yet. I'm telling you, if you would have let me put them on the floor, they'd be pulverized. <laughs> Wait, stop for a second. Let's take a vote. There's three of us here. Zach, Marie, and myself. All those in favor of Marie on the floor stomping our food, <laughs> say aye. Aye. <laughs> Go ahead, Marie, stomp it. I'm not eating any of those M&M's. No. <laughs> There's a bag around them. I'm not putting them on the floor and brushing them up with a dust fan. <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> I think we still need a little bit of, I couldn't see them down there. I'm just trying to make sure that they're all to your liking. So now we have a little bit of a mixture. Oh, I'm using the wrong side. I'm <laughs> using the pointy side. I don't want to make holes in the bag now. I in. think we're good. Okay. Pour it into our bowls. Now, the best thing about nachos, when you think about nachos, is all the toppings, right? Yes. So instead of chips, we've got apples. Mm -hmm. So we've got chocolate chips. Jalapeno peppers. <laughs> and white chocolate. That's the cheese, I guess. Cheese, tomatoes. Interesting enough. I was having a real hard time finding little caramels. You know how you could melt the caramels? Maybe, I don't know, grocery stores are a little troubled these days, right. so caramels aren't on the top of anyone's list. Or everybody ate them all. Or everybody ate them all. So let's melt the chocolate. Okay. All right, our white chocolate and milk chocolate. Magically melted. Magically melted, look at that. That looks Ooh. yummy. Okay, so with all good nachos, it's about layering. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna slide this a little closer to us so we don't make a huge mess. <laughs> you can go first. Okay, I'm gonna go like ziggity zaggity. You can go any way you want. The dark chocolate will cover that right up, so we'll go dark chocolate and then more, more light chocolate. Sure. The dark chocolate's a little thicker. Ooh, there we go. got a glob. That one's mine. <laughs> 
It's hard to see the apples now. <laughs> Is that about? You don't, you don't see the nachos in a good nacho chip, right? That's true. Instead of regular peanuts, I didn't say before, you can use peanuts using any kind of nuts you want. I happen to be a huge fan of cashews. Love them. Mm -hmm. So, and you've got M&M's. M&M's. Know how I said an apple a day? Yep. <laughs> I am not sure this is what the doctors had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> There's an apple under there. We swear. Mm. Look how good that looks. Mm, that is beautiful. Really pretty. Yeah. All right, so the apples are done. Guess what? The rhubarb cake is cooled off and ready to go. We have a little extra syrup. I think we can Finally. eat. Finally. I know, right? <laughs> Let's do this. All right, I'll cut this. This smells great. Yeah. Oh, this looks good. And it did take, for, we were really like, trashed in the directions as to how long it was going to take, right? It took but 50 minutes. It took 50 minutes, yeah. This is the sauce that we put on top. Look at that. It's on top. I don't want any more on it until I taste it because yeah, it's pretty good. sweet. And, and we're we going to eat this. <laughs> <laughs> Dessert overload, but no one's counting because calories haven't been counted in quite a while. I'm not going to lie. Yeehaw. Whoops. Got like a whole chunk here together. I'm just going to take a few. And Good luck it, with that. Give it a shot. Oh my gosh, it all looks delish. Yeah, I feel like we should eat the cake first, right? Or at least try it first. Wow. Mm. You like rhubarb? This is delicious. Mm -hmm. All of you at home need to get this recipe. This was a New York Times recipe too, so I had mm -hmm. a feeling it was gonna be interesting. It's delicious. I can't stop eating it. Zach, you're missing out. And we're done. We gotta take a bite of apple and then we can let him have something to eat. Mm -hmm. Ready? I'm ready. Let's go slowly. <laughs> no, He's <wait>. waiting. Uh, <laughs> He's uh, waiting. I can tell he's ready to jump out of his I chair. I know. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. We're just going to keep eating for a while. <laughs> Good idea. But when we come back, we have one more segment. We're going to head back outside. It's a science experiment. Don't miss it. One last craft for today, and Kim, what did you dream up now? <laughs> well, we're outside with this craft. Okay, that scares me a little, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> because it's really an experiment, but if it okay. makes you feel any better, it's an experiment that would work for little kids. Okay. So I, I thought we should be alright with it. We're not blowing anything up. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to, right. in honor of Memorial Day, we're going to make something a red, white, and blue sort of experiment. We'll see how it goes. It's gonna <laughs> bubble up and be all foamy. We hope. We hope. So this is um, an old file folder that I had that was worthless. So it's heavier cardstock is kind of what it is. And you wanna divide these mason jars into three sections. So we're gonna mm. use some duct tape. Can't use scotch tape. Ooh, don't wanna <laughs> blow away. <laughs> Already we're having problems. Thank you for the save. <laughs> we'll tuck them under the tray. But um, we need to tape them together so that it makes make three it sections. Tree. Okay. There goes mine. And, oops. <laughs> Here, I'll hold this one while you get it. Stick it underneath there. Okay. And now you want to kind of make it sort of, you know, like three triangles, I guess you would say and smush it down in there. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna try to keep everything separate. Yeah, yeah. but it probably it's, won't last. Yeah, it's gonna go along the bottom there. One of the things that I thought was interesting when I was reading, it doesn't give you a whole lot of direction. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be it's, trial and error. It says, start with a couple tablespoons of baking soda. So bring out a couple tablespoons of baking soda and, and just gonna put them in one separate hole or i'm gonna spread them around but is are we supposed to be keeping it separate yeah but it's not gonna be perfect <laughs> you know i thought it's we not... were trying to keep things separate because but we're what, gonna have a chemical reaction but what somewhere. you're gonna see is it's, it's all, gonna all gonna go to the bottom. bottom so maybe it'll separate a little bit we put the food coloring in last the food coloring in last are we, we well the food coloring in 
before we add the vinegar. Okay, I was gonna say the vinegar should be last. I think that's yeah. what's gonna re make us have a reaction here, right? We'll see. But anyway, so the ingredients are some vinegar, some dish soap, and food coloring. Not even any water. I thought maybe we would need some water. All right, all right, so food, or not food coloring, a little dish soap in each section for you. Okay, I got it, because now the thing that's gonna be the difference is the color is gonna be, you're trying to do one red, one white, one blue. Right? Of course, because it's Memorial Day, red, okay. white, and blue. So this is the red food coloring. And I got the blue. How many drops are you putting in? Oh, I don't drops. How many gloves are you putting in? <laughs> well, this one, yeah, this one is a little more. It'll be red for sure. Mine too. <laughs> she's this giving one, me green, but look at what she it did. It doesn't pour very well. It doesn't have a nice, that one has a nice topper. <laughs> so this is the thing that you I divided. Think that's why we divide. Okay, it's so one that's red, yes. one blue, and, and one, one red, stays one, white. Okay, now it makes sense. Okay, done. All right, done. All right. Oh, wait, so now we're at the last. Wait, move that. <laughs> <laughs> Clear things away. Clear everything away because we don't know what's gonna happen we here. We should have sound effects here for sure. Do you want to go first? I don't care. You're holding it. You can go first. All right. So how much am I putting in? It doesn't say. Just pour a little bit in and see what happens. And then add more. So I'm gonna try to get all at the same time. Or... Oh yeah. Good luck. I did bring a more, big... More, 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 more. Oh, look at it. It's growing, Marie. Stop. It's growing. <laughs> <laughs> it's red, white, and blue. Hold on. Oh. I want to drink it, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mind the red sort of... Oh! <laughs> That's a nice little celebration. <laughs> oh, wait. I don't see your blue. Where's your blue? I'm sure it's coming oh, it's eventually. <laughs> it's starting to come up. Oh, how cool. <laughs> I the only thing that would be better is if you could drink it, because it looks like you want to drink it, it right? does, Yeah, go ahead, try it. No, no, it. I'm sure it tastes, I can smell it, smells like vinegar. It does smell like, you know, the really funny thing, there's nothing that would kill you in any of this no, stuff, you, you but it would be it, nasty. It's disgusting. It would be really <laughs> nasty. dish soap. <laughs> All right, so it does say that it will just keep doing this for a while, oh. and if you want to make it stop, just throw in some more baking soda. Oh, interesting. But how cool does that look? That is very, very cool. Great for the kids to do. Great. You Celebrate! You have all this stuff at home, right? All right, yeah, just try something different. What the heck, you know? <laughs> all right, well, this was our last segment for today. I think we should take a walk. Everybody's been doing a lot of that lately, well, yeah, right? Let's, let's go for a walk. Let's take a walk. It's always great to get outside. Enjoy some family time. That's all you need to be the talk, talk of the, the town. town. Our moms are going to love it. They have no choice. <laughs> <laughs>